Welcome to another episode of What's New in S2M Center version 5. In this video, we're going to be going over the general features that have been added to the S2M Center. With the S2M Center open, the first thing we need to do is open a sample job. Let me just jump ahead to that real quick. Now that we have some parts to process, I'm going to go over the first new feature. You now have the ability to hold your mouse pointer over the image in the part list to display a tooltip that will help identify what the icon means. In this case, the icon means that the part can be optimized and output to a secondary CNC machine. The next feature has to do with part filtering, so let me just click on the filter button to bring up the part filter dialog. If you are familiar with the part filter dialog, then you should notice the new feature, but if you aren't, let me show it to you. It's the new invert selection button here at the bottom of the window. This button allows you to invert the selection that you have made. That means that any box that's unchecked will become checked, while any box that is checked will become unchecked. Now I want to go over a new feature that we're really excited about, and I'm sure you will be too when you hear it. It's the ready for output feature. Let me optimize these parts so that we can take a look at that. Now let's assume I spent the last 30 minutes or so changing the optimization to suit my needs. I can output this to my machine and be done with it. But we have all had those times when a file gets corrupted or deleted accidentally or we just need to output that sheet one more time. Before we would have to re-optimize the job, change things around, and hope we got it right. Not anymore though. Beginning with the S2M Center V5, we can now save a copy of the optimization we created so that we can reopen it later if the need arises. To do that, we just need to get our optimization the way we want it, then click on the Utilities tab in the ribbon bar, and finally, click on the Export Job State button. This will create a .snc file that we can open in the S2M Center anytime we want. The next set of features that I want to cover have to do with printing. So first I will bring up the Preferences dialog. Next we just need to click on the Reports tab to check out the new printing preferences. Now we can see the first new printing feature, the Show Room Name Instead of Room Number option. This allows us to display the name of the room that the part belongs to instead of the room number if we want. To see the next set of features, we need to exit out of the Preferences dialog so that we can do some printing. I went ahead and clicked on the Print button so that we can see the new ability to print a range of pages. Now you may be asking yourself, how do I know what range of pages I want to print? Well, to answer that, we can look over here in the Cut Patterns list. Let's say that I wanted to print out the three-quarter two-sided oak ply page only. Since I can see that my three-quarter two-sided alder ply has three sheets, and my one-quarter two-sided alder ply has one sheet, I know that the print range that I want is five to five. Let's print out a sample page so that we can take a look at the changes we made to the printouts. As you can see, my room name for this room is showing instead of the room number. Also, you can see these two gray areas. This is another new feature. The S2M Center will now print out the offcut material that is created when the square off nest feature is enabled. In addition to this printout, you can now get part printouts as well. All that we have to do is be in the parts view and click the print button to get one or more of these sheets. As you can see, I get images of the part as well as barcode and program information and part information. Each part will have a sheet that is similar to this. To show you the next feature, I cleared out the parts list. The S2M Center now has the ability to import Bloom Dynaplan BXF files. Let's take a look at how that works. I just need to click on the Import DXF button in the ribbon bar to display the DXF import dialog. Now I will go ahead and open a BXF file real quick. Now you can see that because this is a BXF file, we don't need to edit any layer schemes to get the parts the way we want them. So I'm going to click on the Save button now, which will import all of the parts from the BXF file into the S2M Center. Next I want to go over the new part editor that has been created for the S2M Center. To take a look at this, we just need to right click on a part and click the edit command. And now you can see the part editor. If you are a Cabinet Vision user, this should be a familiar sight to you. 
if you've ever had to edit any individual parts. But in case you haven't had to edit any parts, or you don't use Cabinet Vision, then allow me to go over a few things regarding the part editor. First, you have the work area in which you will be doing your editing. As you can see, we have a part being displayed to us right now. Second, you have the sidebar here, which will allow you to either edit the shape of a part, or edit the operations of a part. Both the shape editor and the operations editor use CAD tools to define shapes and operation paths. We aren't going to be getting into that in this video, so I suggest that you take a look at your help files to learn more about the part editor. Finally, I want to go over a couple of changes that we made to the cncrun.txt files. First, we gave you the ability to define edge banding. How does this work? Well, let's take a typical header file. You can now include the list of edge banding that you will use. The information included is that 1. This is an edge banding. 2. The code that represents this edge banding. 3. The material that the banding is made of. 4. The color of the banding. And finally, the thickness of the edge banding. Now, if we take a typical part line from the CNC run.txt file, then we can see that we have the ability to define a banding code, which the S2M Center will be able to read since we defined our banding in the header. The last change that was made is the ability to define grain matching. Let's look at a typical part line again. Here, we can see that a grain matching group, X position, and Y position have been defined. For more information about these values and how they relate to the part, please take a moment to look through your S2M Center help files. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video on the new features of the S2M Center. We hope you enjoyed it, and as always, if you need more information on the S2M Center, you can visit us at www.screentomachine.com.